Oh, I'm in Topaz Gigapixel here, and I'm just going to drag an image from my desktop onto the uh, main screen here, and it'll load it straight in. Now, this is an image that I've just generated using Google Imaging 3, which is their um, AI um, artwork generator and image generator, and it's currently free, so I'd recommend that. And we go to the bottom first, and let's check the original size. Let's check the file size as it is, or the file dimensions. 1408 by 768 pixels. Okay, so that's a pretty standard output for these kind of things. We can zoom in using the magnification adjustment here, and we can actually um, move a slider here to zoom in now. now. This isn't changing the upscale value at the moment. This is just zooming in and out of the current size. So you can see when I do that, it's quite pixelated and blocky. Um, but just to let you know, you can do that um, even before you upscale. So the first thing we want to go and do is go to the top right-hand side of the image, and where it says upscale here at the top, we want to choose the upscale factor, one, two, four, six, or custom. So I'm going to do four for this because I find that that's just a good, it's a bit of an arbitrary um, figure, but it's quite a good one for general upscaling um, that would cover you for most uses. If you have specific dimension requirements, you can enter them in the boxes underneath here and you can choose specifics. And you can also click on the crop tool up here and add a crop to the image if you wish pre upscale so that's quite handy i'm not going to do that now but that's just something to note so now we're looking at the image 100 percent magnification but at its new upscaled size so if we go down to the bottom info bar here we can see that output size is now 5632 by 3027 and um, 3072 sorry so four times larger so we've now got a decent size image now the important next step is to choose the most appropriate upscale model for this. Now this is more of an illustration type look. It's not photo real. It's more of a detailed illustration. So that's going to influence which model we choose potentially. But if you're confused about which one of these to go for and you don't want to keep clicking through them all, my best advice is to actually use the AB compare option here. So there's this little icon that says AB. And you can click on that and it'll let you choose up to four different models to compare. So I always like to do standard, high fidelity, sometimes low res if the original image is quite bad quality and it's got some more compression artifacts and things. But I'm not going to bother with that on this because it's quite a good, it's quite a good starting point. Um, and for this one, art and CG definitely seems like an appropriate one to select. And then just click compare and it will bring them all up um, in a real-time comparison window. So top left is standard V2, bottom left is high fidelity V2, and on the right here it's art and CG. So what you can do now is you can just click and drag around and move around the image, wait a, wait a second for it to um, refresh with the um, updated view, and then you can compare how the details are processed on um, both of the, um, or all three of these different uh, models. So as we can see here, we've got on the right hand side, this is the Art and CG one. It's definitely processing it a lot stronger than the other two. It's emphasizing a lot of the lines more in the hard edges and it's given an overall um, appearance of a much sharper image. Now I'm not sure whether for this that's something that I, I like. Um, so I think it's a bit much for me and bearing in mind on the right hand side here we have a model settings section which depending on the model you you have active has got some additional controls like sharpen, denoise and then fixed compression if applicable. Now I like to start with everything down at the bottom so I'm looking at the base the base level kind of the bare minimum um, sort of appearance that you'll get from it and this art and cg one looks too over processed for me so even with everything at minimum i'm going to click the cross in the top right corner to make that preview go away and uh, now i'm just left with the standard v2 and the high fidelity v2 model now a lot of the time there's not a huge amount of difference between these two but there can be quite subtle differences uh, depending on the type of image and um, it really does it really does pay to just spend a couple of minutes just looking around the image just scanning around, looking at some of the fine details, like on here, the whiskers and around the mouth and the nose, and um, just seeing which one gives you the most pleasing uh, results. So for me, the High Fidelity V2 looks a little bit sharper. I'm not worried about a little bit of sharpness because you can adjust that here, but 
I'm just thinking it just maybe brings out the tiny, sort of the tiny, finer details a little bit more. So I'm going to click on that and then click on the bottom right and says a button that says apply model. Now that's not that's not process the file yet. That's just basically updated the preview to that model high fidelity. So that's just a little process you can go through to figure out which one's the best for you. You can also press this lightning bolt button, which is auto, which which is supposed to use like Topaz's best guess as to what it thinks is right for your image based on the image. A lot of the time for me, I don't agree with it. So I tend to not to use that. See, it's, it checks standard for me, but for my own taste, I like the high fidelity model. So you can use that anytime you see that little lightning bolt, you can use that as a starting point, maybe suggestions, but I wouldn't take it as gospel. I'd always go on your own judgment because it's it's the image you're processing after all. So, you know, automation's nice, but human input is, is always gonna win at the end of the day. So now we're gonna skip generative model because that's not relevant here. And then the model settings, we saw a moment ago in the preview window, but now we can have a look at them. Sharpen, denoise, and fixed compression we've got available in this. So sharpen is kind of obvious. It's just a, it's a fairly subtle sharpening. Um, if you used Photo AI, Topaz Photo AI, there's a lot more aggressive sharpening in that. But in this, it's more of a subtle sharpening. Um, but it can still, a little still goes a long way. If your image is already quite sharp, I wouldn't overdo this because... Um, it can make some of the edges start to look a bit crunchy. Denoise, I would only use that if you felt that the original image had a lot of grain or noise in it to start with, um, which this one doesn't. And the same with compression. I wouldn't drag these sliders up for the sake of it because they could actually make the image quality worse if they don't have those inherent problems. But while I'm on the subject of um, making it look worse than before and after, I've been using the full screen preview for this image, which means every time I click and hold the left mouse button, it shows me the preview of the image before it's had its processing done. And I let go and give it a few seconds to update, and there we go. But there are other preview options down here. So if we go on this one, we've got a, we've got a good old before and after slider. And then the next one across is a very useful and just side by side before and after view. On the left is obviously before any processing, and on the right is after. Um, Topaz has applied its current settings. Now, obviously, bear in mind that the images not only look sharper and nicer, but this is also four times larger than the original as well. So you've got the benefit of the of the upscale and also the enhancement in quality. So I'm happy with, with those settings. I'm just going to come now. Face recovery is not relevant, really. Um, gamma correction, not really relevant for this. So now I click on export image, and it's going to give us some options here. We can, under the export settings, we can put a prefix and a suffix to the file name. So if you've got multiple files open, you can have it. So I have it so Topaz is added um, at the end and Upscaled is added at the start. And then you can choose which folder to save them to. Choose your format and color space. I brought preserve input color space and click save. And it is as easy as that. You now have your high res improved image.